I was walking through the dollar store thinking about my next project. I got inspired by this. Hey everyone, this is Josh and you're watching Scattercraft. So I wanted to trash bash something for D&D, but usually that falls more in line with futuristic games like Warhammer. But I've had this idea to build a brewery with a big copper still. My personal inspiration and idea for the dwarves in my games is usually more along the lines of the more steampunk style dwarves like the Dwarmer from Morrowind. Best Elder Scrolls, by the way. I love that style and I wanted to build something a bit more out of the ordinary this time. So let's build this thing. All right, always good with a project like this. Start with a fresh blade. Safely disposed of. Lay out the base of my building. I want it to be six by nine. But I also needed to make room for the bricks, so I cut it five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I decided this project needed a base, so I decided to cut one out of the one inch here. I don't think it'll fit pretty good. I cut it so three bricks fit perfectly in an inch. It was about eight and a half millimeters, since there's not really a third of an inch. I just started ripping a ton of these bricks on the peroxon. I should have a space for a staircase. It's either about two inch wide is about right. Just cut that out with my alpha knife. It would be best to get all the bricks laid before I started building the steps. So I got all those done one by one. And there it is. I started cutting pavers for the top. And I made a bunch of those. I just cut to fit pieces to make the stairs. You can see I left the space on the top of the stairs here. That's just going to be covered up by this top paver. And there it is with the offset pavers. This is going to be a great piece. Just use my foam ball to roll on some stone texture. Then I applied the Mod Podge. While that dries, I'll work on the house. Got the walls cut. Did about three inches tall here. I don't know if I measured it. If you look on my cutting mat, you can see the diagonal lines. I just used the 30 degree line and followed it here. I wanted a lower pitch roof. I just glued on the front and back. I 
and put on the roof. There we go. I thought the ends of the roof were kind of boring, so I created this shape. Can't tell you the dimensions because I just laid it out and cut it until it looked nice. This is what I came up with, and I kind of like it. I started laying all the bricks on the house. Decided I wanted some timbers as well, so I had to rip out a few bricks. Oh, that little piece came with it too. I have to put that back in. Just angled the top of this at a 30 degree as well to make it fit under the roof nicely. So I used my standard one inch by one and a half inch door size. I had some adhesive back chipping labels. I thought those would be pretty good. Instead of gluing construction paper on, I could just stick them down. They were pretty well, made it much easier. I used some very tiny half inch pins I found to create rivets for the door. And I just wood frame that in. And I thought I needed a few windows. And this tray I've been saving from an angel food cake. Couldn't decide between purple and orange, but I ended up going with an orange post-it to use the back of the window. And then I just framed that in. To cover up the edges, I put little trim pieces in. Made the window look nice and detailed. There's all the bricks done. Use these paper smoothie straws I got online for pretty cheap. Got a hundred of them, they're pretty thick. Use my favorite scissors to cut these in half. It always seemed to give a bad side and a good side. So I use the bad sides for the bottom and the good sides for the top. Then I just laid all those out. Started trimming everything out. This coping saw is not meant for cutting the smaller wood. I wanted a wooden beam that I could hang a sign from, but I didn't want it to be foam because I didn't want it to break, so I used actual wood. I started laying out all the shingles one by one. This is what really took a long time. And man, doesn't that hurt your eyes. That is bright. Put some Mod Podge on that. Nope, oh, I forgot I'm out on this one. Need to make up a new batch. You never made up a batch of it. It's really simple. Just add black paint until it looks right. I can't really describe how much, just until it's a blackish gray. I just start painting that on everywhere. I thought I'd cut the end off of this cup. Then I realized I could just flip it over and build a base around it. And that'd be much easier and it'd look nice. I 
laid it out and drew a circle for where I needed to cut. And then just cut that out. And that snapped right in. I use the same labels to make some seams for rivets on the still. The circle ones I laid out with my compass and cut them out with the scissors. Took a little fiddling, but they worked out pretty good. So I got a four pack of funnels a while back for changing my oil and this little tiny one came with it and I've never used it so I thought it'd be good use for this. Cut off the rim with my favorite scissors. And then covered that too. I have this brewing airlock, which is kind of funny to use real brewing stuff. These are real cheap, but it was very hard plastic and I couldn't cut it. I ended up cutting it on the Proxon. I don't recommend doing this. It put off some nasty fumes and I wouldn't recommend breathing that in. I also had these little travel shampoo bottles that I cut the top off of and changed out to something that looked a little more industrial. And at this point, I'm just putting stuff together and attaching, seeing what looks good. Got my little bits container and try to find a top for that piece. Yeah, I don't care for that. Golf tee things, I don't like those either. Washer might be okay if I can put something on top of that. These little leftover pieces from some sprues, that seem to be about right. Now for some more straws. I got these little bendy straws at the dollar store. Also added on a few more bricks to hold on this side piece here. I figured it'd be kind of nice to have a suspended tank up here. Put some supports holding it up. That's what I could use to run all the hoses off of. I initially attached the yellow one here, but I ended up moving it later. Twisted the green one up here to be a condenser for the still. And used the original straw for the top as well. I used more of the little pins that I used on the door for this, but I had to put them in with a pair of pliers and it was pretty tough. They kept bending on me. I think I bent 10 or 20 of them. The top was too hard, so I ended up putting rhinestones on there as rivets. Then after I Mod Podge the base so that the foam wouldn't melt, I spray painted it all. This is the fun part because you get to see it as one piece. And man, am I stoked about the way that looks. Cut out a couple of little beer mugs for a sign for the building. I super glued these together and used some accelerator to get them to set really fast so I didn't have to wait. I just sanded that down. Drilled a couple little holes in it. Attached some craft chain I found.
And I painted out all the stonework in a pewter gray. And use this antique copper for the still. I also use the same antique copper for the roof. I was going to do red tiles, but I thought copper would be fun. Then I used a light mocha to dry brush all the stone. And then antique parchment white for the final dry brush. All right, and now for the reveal. So this kind of ended up being more of a drinking straw themed episode than I originally thought it would. Not to mention this one build ended up turning into three. So starting with the building here, I really love the look I ended up getting with the paper milkshake straws I used for the roof, but it was very time consuming. This probably took up half of the entire house build time just building the roof. That being said, I'm glad I tried it out because it ended up looking real nice. And maybe I'll use it on smaller builds in the future, maybe not such a big roof like this. The space I ended up building is going to be real modular, I'm going to be able to use this in a lot of different situations. My original plan was to attach this to the house, but I'm glad I decided to keep it separate. Now instead of just having one purpose, this has a million uses. I can see using this in a city, for a dungeon, for maybe some modular ruins, there's a lot of different uses I have for this now. Of course, the possibilities are endless. The still was by far the most fun part of the project. I got to let my creativity fly and just start putting things together the way I felt was right. I really do enjoy more of a freeform building method like that. You won't see me putting a bunch of blueprints out for all my builds. That's where I believe this kind of project becomes art, is where you just let your creativity fly and just come up with something on the spot. I mean, this looks amazing with just a kid's beach ball toy, you know, a whole bunch of straws, some shampoo travel containers, and a little 99 cent wine airlock. I mean, you get a really great look like this. Anyways, I do want to say thanks to everyone that's been sharing my videos. You guys are the best. If you like this video, please do share it with your friends. I'm just starting out here on YouTube and your shares really help grow this channel more than anything else. Also like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching Scattercraft. Bye.